I mean, we did a lot of work um, to ensure that our our customers thought that we hung the moon. And the advantage of that on the other side is that we, our, the prices of our fans were typically twice. I mean, when we started, we didn't have any competition. Uh, when we sold the company, we must have had 100 competitors all over the world. And our fans sold for about twice what anybody else's did. Before I hit the record button, you were saying that, that when you look for, for new companies to invest in in your new venture, you look for like success probability. And I suppose you went into fans, which is something that's probably quite hard to differentiate and quite hard to to you know build value in outside of the actual product that you're selling can you can you tell me a little bit about how you you created that value in that 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 company big ass fans we were able to uh, differentiate our fans which were very very large fans i mean these fans <clears throat> range mm, excuse me up to six meters in diameter so they're very large fans and that was a differentiating factor. In addition, uh, in addition to that, I had spent time, uh, actually uh, over ten years, working in the market that I that I recognized could use the technology, which I think is important um, because I knew I knew who my customers were going to be, and I knew what my customers or potential customers were interested in. How did you end up with such a a clear name that tells people exactly what it is that you do, but at the same time is quite memorable and quite easy for, for people to, to talk about. That's when we, we started the company and, and we were called HVLS high volume, low speed fan company and uh, prospective co customers would call us on the phone and uh, we would answer HVLS fan company and uh, there would be a pause They'd say, are, are you those guys that make those big ass fans? And it became obvious to us fairly quickly that that was a much better name. So we changed the name and we got all sorts of feedback, all sorts of pushback, which was great. I mean, absolutely great because there were people that are, oh my God, this is the worst thing. I mean, you're corrupting the youth of America, which is great uh, because then we could answer that. And and it, I think it's fascinating that there's always a group of people and you're lucky if you find a name or a concept that uh, upsets a certain number of people. Now, we realized that based on our customers and who our customers were and their, uh, they were uh, maintenance people, maintenance supervisors, maintenance directors, engineers, people that are hands on, that are, that are um, normally don't wear um uh, suits and ties, that they would think that that was pretty freaking funny. I mean, we did a lot of work um, to ensure that our, our customers thought that we hung the moon. And the advantage of that on the other side is that we, our, the prices of our fans were typically twice. I mean, when we started, we didn't have any competition. Uh, when we sold the company, we must have had 100 competitors all over the world and our fans sold for about twice what anybody else's did and the reason that we were able to to uh, to charge higher prices uh, I think was the culture and and the brand and the fact that that we made a big deal about spending money on uh, taking care of the customers on making sure that we had the best products on making sure that and this sounds odd, I guess, maybe, uh, but making sure if you bought a fan, that was the last fan you were going to buy. And I think that, that that built a brand and that supported the, the price differential that we demanded because people expected that that's what they wanted. So you have to know who your customer is. So now how much of the, the, the price, the ultimate price that you got for the company, how much of that do you think was the 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 actual value of, you know, the physical assets that you created and the customer base and how much of it do you think came down to the brand 
equity, the value that you'd created and the perception that people held about the company? The, the majority of what we got uh, uh, in payment was for the brand because, I mean, we made money, but honestly, we did not make that much money. I think I mentioned to you before that we paid on average uh, 40% more in wages on average uh, than, than uh, other companies in the state in which we work, the state of Kentucky and 30% more than was average for the whole U.S. It wasn't as if we were cutting corners and scrimping, but I think that uh, that helped build the brand of the company.